you were telling me about your research in circulating tumor cells. And I know the MD Anderson has had some reports out on that recently. I've been fascinated about that. I have been telling patients for years that with invasive breast cancers, we're always worried about the cells that are shed off and that we know are circulating, that that's one of the reasons why we have to treat the whole body. But share with our audience. Ultimately, the specific reason for the patient's death is actually metastasis. Correct. So the cells that have the ability to go from point A in the breast to point B elsewhere are the cells that we really need to key in on and focus our, our efforts. So circulating tumor cells rationally make sense. It's, it's thought that these are precursors of metastasis and that they're subject to metastatic inefficiency. A fraction of them may land somewhere and cause harm, but some of them may not. Do you have any estimate at all? You know, I tell patients, look, you, you know, you've been circulating tumor cells for months and months before you've ever seen me. I sort of say, I think a very few of these end up doing anything bad. Probably the majority don't. But you're the expert on circulating tumor cells. What are your thoughts about that? I think you're absolutely right. I think it's far less than 1% of cells that are shed that ultimately can be viable macrometastasis. And it does have to do with seed and soil. The cells have to be the right type of cells that have the propensity to metastasize. They have to land in the correct place. There are the physical properties of the vasculature that play a role as well, as well as cellular adhesion molecules. But nonetheless, it's been shown that these are live, viable cells. Correct. Uh, so they are very important. And they're significant in terms of prognosis, even for early stage breast cancer. Anthony Lucci published a paper recently. Well, that's the paper I was talking about, you know, that even a few uh, cells potentially pretend a, a worse prognosis. Do you want to comment on that, please? Absolutely. So uh, the Veridex, or cell search assay, is the only FDA-approved assay. And, and Dr. Lucci used that type of uh, technique for his paper and showed with a, a cutoff of a single circulating tumor cell that that portended an adverse prognosis. I myself am interested in other technologies because technologies such as the, the cell search assay are based on surface markers for epithelial cell markers. But the most aggressive breast cancers lack these markers and mm -hmm. are triple negative, basaloid or clawed mm -hmm. and low cancers. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in developing technology to be able to find and profile the circulating tumor cells that are both EPCAM positive and EPCAM negative. Okay. And then, uh, this is what I call my magic wand question. I'm handing you a magic wand right now. And you, I want you to look into the future a little bit, and your research in particular, and, and share with us where you hope that it's going to go. And if we can identify these cells, can we then profile these cells to target therapies against these cells? Because they may be different than the mother load as they circulate out. Exactly. That, is that that, fair? That's very fair. That's actually my specific research interest. Oh, so you, all right. you, you all right. nail on the all head. Right, well, go. Um, so uh, rare cell profiling has a lot of potential to help patients because we can actually profile rare circulating tumor cells and profile either small numbers of pure circulating tumor cells or pure, pure populations of single circulating tumor cells to look at the heterogeneity of disease and look for those bad acting genes, bad acting uh, RNA transcripts that actually are involved with breast cancer progression. And so my, my hope for this line of research is that one day we can use circulating tumor cells as a surrogate for biopsies of macrometastases or other similar strategies. For example, in a study that I have which is funded by the Society of Surgical Oncology, we're looking if gene expression profiling of circulating tumor cells can predict for pathologic complete response to neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Right. This technology is really in its infancy, okay. so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's feasible technically to do these types of studies, but there will continue to be advances, and so the, the future for this field is very bright. Wow. On that note, I, I just, as I say, every time I run into you, I sort of bubble up, because you're a bubbly, optimistic person, and I'm thrilled that you were able to stop by with us this morning and share this with you. Uh, welcome. As you know, I'm in Southern California also, so welcome right. to SoCal. Thank you. As we say, <laughs> and your wonderful colleagues at USC. So, hey, listen, Julie, congratulations and tally ho. Keep going for it all. Thanks, I'm going to turn it back over to Todd. Just stay here with me for a minute. Sure. Todd's going to wrap up today's session. Mm -hmm.